Hi, welcome to Reading with Ms. Momo. I'm so glad you could join me today. Today we're going to read another fairy tale. And someone asked me, what is a fairy tale? A fairy tale is a story with a moral lesson and has obstacles and usually starts out once upon a time and ends happily ever after. It's make-believe. It has good and evil characters and magical animals and wizards and witches and elves and animals that talk. And usually there's a problem and a solution. Fairy tales have been around for a long time and a lot of your parents and grandparents have been reading them forever. And some of them are real familiar, but they all have different authors and different people's views of the different fairy tales. And I last two weeks have been reading fairy tales to you and I will continue for the rest of this month. And I hope that you will enjoy the fairy tales and maybe even write your own fairy tale using some of these stories. So today our fairy tale is gonna be a little bit different from what you're used to, but the same story. It's Goldilocks by Dom DeLuise and illustrated by Christopher Santoro. And the illustrations are just absolutely stunningly beautiful. Are you ready? Here we go. Once upon a time, in a forest far away, lived a beautiful little girl in the most gorgeous blonde hair you would ever saw. It was very long, very shiny, very curly. I mean, it really got your attention. And look, the birds have her hair and they have it going up in the air and her hair is just beautiful, blonde, curly, golden color. In the forest, if you were a very, very tall man, why well, they would call you the giant figures. And if you snarled at people all the time, they would call you grumpy. Makes sense. So it was only natural that this beautiful little girl with gorgeous, long, blonde, shiny, curly hair should be called Goldilocks. She must have had a real name long ago, but this story is so old that no one remembers it. Everyone just knew her as Goldilocks. And there's the giant, and there's the grumpy lady with a cloud over her head. Goldilocks had such beautiful hair, people were always complimenting her on how wonderful she looked. And pretty soon, she began to think so too. And that's when her troubles really began. Her mother and father would say, Goldilocks, you cannot go out and play until you have finished all of your homework. But because Goldilocks was so spoiled and headstrong, she would often disobey them. Let me put it this way. She was a girl who just wanted to take no for an answer. She disobeyed her parents and was not very nice. Her parents are just, they don't know what to do. It's a real problem. One day, when she was supposed to be doing her homework, Goldilocks decided to go for a walk in the woods instead. And look at this beautiful picture with all the birds and the mushrooms. And she's going for a walk. Ta -la 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 -la. Going for a walk into the woods, even though she's supposed to be doing her homework. That's not very good, is it? She's not minding. After a while, she came to an adorable little cottage. Everything about the house was so inviting. The little white picket fence, the flowers growing along the pathway to the door, tulips, pansies, snapdragons, her favorite. Before you could say Rumpelstiltskin, Goldilocks was knocking on the door. No one answered. She pulled on the bell. Still, no one answered. She tried the door. It was open. Anyone home? She shouted, and guess what? No one answered. Anyone else would have left, but not our Goldilocks. And it's a lovely little home there, little cottage, and all the flowers. And she knocked and pulled the bell, and no one answered, and she still did what? As luck would have it, the cottage was home to Mr. and Ms. Bear and the baby, baby bear. 
The bears are married late in life by the wise old owl under the giant elm tree. Everyone came to the wedding. The rabbits, the birds, they provided the music. The deer, oh, they're so dear. Even Mr. and Mrs. Skunk, but they sat way in the back. Now this particular morning, Mama Bear, who is very domestic and a Julia Childs fan, made a big pot of delicious. Now this is the point of the story that's cloudy. She either made porridge, which is a hot cereal, very good with honey, and bears love honey, or else she made a delicious pot of hot soup, pasta a fagioli, made with macaroni and beans. Oh, bears love beans too. I've heard the story both ways. It for sure wasn't ham and eggs. If you ask me, it was the pasta e fagioli. So, let's go with the soup, okay? Okay. There they are at their wedding. Isn't it beautiful? And Mama Bear had made some soup. The soup was so hot when it came to the table that Papa Bear said, let's take a walk with this soup cools off. That's where the bears were when Goldilocks came to the door. Get it? When Goldilocks walked into the house, she smelled something delicious. She tasted Papa Bear's soup. Oh my, she cried. This soup is too hot. Then she slid over toward Mama's bear soup. Yuck. This soup is too cold, she shuddered. Then, you guessed it, she sampled baby bear soup. Yum, yum, she said, smiling. This soup is just right. And she ate it all up. You know, I wonder about the girl's manners. For one, home, and she invites herself to lunch. No one's home, and she invites herself to lunch and just eats up their soup. That's not very nice. Not good manners. Now anyone else might have left, but not our Goldilocks. She thought she'd have a little rest first. So she sat down in Papa Bear's chair. Oh dear, she moaned. This chair is much too hard. And there she is. Then she scooted over to Mama the Bear's chair, and it was soon clear that it was much too soft. This chair is much too soft, she said, as she's sinking down into the soft chair. Then, you guessed it, she moved over to Baby Bear's chair, a gift he had just gotten from Auntie B. Bear. Down she sat and said, this chair is just right. Then guess what? Crash! I do believe that Goldilocks was big for her age, because the chair broke. I mean, really broke. A leg went here, the seat went plop. A leg went there, and the back went flop. Goldilocks landed on the floor with a smack, and her backside hurt so much she almost cried. And there she is, legs in the air. She broke the chair all to pieces because she was too big for Baby Bear's little chair that his Aunt B had made him. Now you would think that once you've broken a chair, you might slow down a bit or think things over or maybe even leave, but not our Goldilocks. She gathered herself up and before you could say, jump, Jack, jump, she was upstairs lying on Papa Bear's bed. Oh no, she cried. This bed is much too hard. And there she is. Then she scooted over to Mama Bear's bed. Oh no, she moaned as she sank. This bed is much too soft. And there she is. Then, you guessed it, in the baby bear's bed, she climbed. Why, this bed is just right, she said, as she snuggled under the covers. She placed her head on the pillow and fell fast asleep. Let's face it, Goldilocks had had a, had a busy day and was ready for a nap. Goodness gracious, 
She is something else, isn't she? In another part of the forest, Papa Bear looked at his watch and he said, let's go home. The soup should be cool enough to eat by now. When they arrived, the first thing they noticed was the door open. I'm positive I closed that door when we left, said Mama Bear. When they went inside, Papa Bear shouted, Someone has been eating my soup. Oh, exclaimed Mama Bear. Someone's been eating my soup too. And look, cried Baby Bear. Someone been eating my soup. And oh no, it's all gone. Then, look, oh look, said Papa Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair. I don't know for sure how he could tell, but they say Mama Bear was very domestic, very neat, and an expert at fluffing pillows. You're right, Papa Bear, and look, someone has been sitting in my chair too, said Mama Bear. Now, Baby Bear was almost afraid to look, and sure enough, when he did, his worst fears were realized. Someone's been sitting in my chair, he said. And look, oh look, it's all broken. And Baby Bear started to cry real tears. Mama Bear comforted her Baby Bear. And there he is, and he's crying, sobbing. Shh, that someone might still be here, said Papa Bear, as he grabbed a tennis racket and slowly started up the stairs. Mama Bear clung to Baby Bear as they followed behind. Look, look, whispered Papa Bear. My bed, someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, answered Mama. Oh, wow, look, hollered Baby Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, and she's still in it. And there she was, and Baby Bear is not a happy camper. Well, that very moment, Goldilocks woke up and was so surprised to see the three bears looking down at her that she let out a noise that startled everyone. Mama Bear, never known to be a calm person, nearly dropped Baby Bear, which really frightened Papa Bear, who tried to catch Baby Bear with a tennis racket scaring Goldilocks and causing her to fall out of the bed. Wow-wee! Everyone was running around and screaming for a while there. It was a really a mess. But by the time they worked their way downstairs and near the front door, things got calmer and a little clearer and Goldilocks apologized and Mama Bear invited her to lunch. But here they are, they're all scattered around hollering, screaming, Everybody's scared. Nobody knows what to do. And Goldilocks even has the blanket over her head as she's trying to run down the stairs. It was a mess. Fortunately, Mama Bear had made a big pot of soup. And before you could say anti-disestablishmentarianism, Papa Bear had fixed Baby Bear's chair. And Goldilocks and the three bears sat down to a lovely lunch of soup and corn muffins with honey. And bears love honey, as we know. Goldilocks' mother was very concerned about her little girl. Boy, oh boy, was she relieved when Goldilocks finally came home. And the next time she told Goldilocks she couldn't go out until she did her homework, the little girl didn't even think about disobeying. Our Goldilocks had learned her lesson all right. And there she is doing her homework, doing what she was supposed to do. She had learned a lesson. Sometimes after her homework was done, Goldilocks would visit her new friends, the three bears. From time to time, she would bring them homemade corn muffins. They would all sit down with a lovely lunch of soup and corn muffins and have a good laugh about the interesting way they had met. Goldilocks would spread honey on the corn muffins. Oh, bears do love honey. And oh, the three bears did love Goldilocks. And here Papa Bear is taking a picture of them all together and everybody's smiling. And they added a recipe for Goldilocks porridge, Goldilocks pasta e fagaloi, and Goldilocks corn muffins. And look, here is Papa Bear reading the instructions to fix Baby Bear's chair again. 
broken by Goldilocks. I hope you enjoyed that story. It was a little bit different than the traditional one, but it was a fun story, wasn't it? And it had a lesson in it. And the lesson was that you should mind your parents and do your homework and do what you're supposed to do. And there were some obstacles with all the broken things. And it did hap and have a happily ever after ending. And it was make believe because the bears did talk and it was a problem and solution there and they solved the problem. The lesson was that you need to respect the privacy of others and respect others' property and that actions can hurt others. You need to apologize and learn from your mistakes and forgive others and work together. No matter what the situation is, you can solve it if you work together. But mind your parents. That's the most important lesson of all because your parents are no best. Until we meet again, I hope you smile and be happy and have a great day and read some fairy tales and mind your parents. God bless.